everyone, it's Seiji and today I will be talking about poetry, my experiences and kind of like how I got into it. But before we start, first let me show you what I'm wearing. <laughs> So today I am wearing one of my old debating and work dresses. So I got this one off of ASOS a couple of years ago. I really liked it because it reminded me of those French ladies from Harry Potter. And I have always been into clothing with like capes, you know, but I don't wear it too much because like the front fabric wrinkles a lot and so it doesn't really look as nice as it does maybe on camera. I don't know. Anyways, let's talk about poetry. So you might have noticed a bit that I have recently been getting into poetry. I have been trying to write as well as read more of it. And so I thought it would be nice and perhaps even helpful to share my experiences with it. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but I have always felt poetry to be rather inaccessible. I didn't necessarily understand its function. And I think that's just mainly because of how it was taught at school. In school, we were supposed to see poetry as kind of like a puzzle. We would get a poem and then we were supposed to sort of dissect it in the sense of looking at like the rhyme structure and all the literary techniques that were used and occasionally we would try to uncover like the deeper meaning of the poem but yeah the way it was handled at school just kind of ruined it for me because I really didn't understand like what the use was or like how to actually read poetry because when I would try doing it myself it would be like okay um let's see which word rhymes with which and then often like you'll find poems that don't have any rhyme at all and you're like okay what do I do now <laughs> you know so it's always been kind of like this enigma like what is poetry how do I read it and you know, in recent times, I have been incredibly privileged in that I have been able to actually talk to poets and writers about poetry and ask them, like, how do you read poetry? <laughs> so um, one of the things that really stuck with me was what uh, Elizabeth Gilbert told me. You might not know this, but she actually writes poetry, but just for pleasure and with no intention of wanting to have it published. Anyway, what she told me was, poetry is supposed to wash over you like a wave. And that for some reason really clicked with me. I feel that poetry speaks more to our feelings, heart and soul, you know, rather than mainly the mind. Also, I'm a strong believer that if possible, most poetry should be read out loud. That's the way I currently consume poetry, even if I'm alone, which is always. <laughs> But yeah, it just adds so much to the experience. And it's just a lot of fun to play around with because poetry can be read in so many different ways. You can, for instance, try putting emphasis on specific words. You can raise or lower your voice, speed up or slow down your pace, add emotion to specific parts of the poem. And it just creates like all these different ways of coloring a poem. Am I sounding a bit philosophical at this moment. Yes, but I hope that you understand what I'm trying to get at. Poetry is a very interactive medium. So now I have a couple of suggestions for you if you are interested in getting into poetry or if you already read poetry and just trying to discover different things. So the first thing that I would recommend is trying to read stories in verse. Now that I think about it, that was actually how I I sort of got into it. Last year, I believe, I read um, The Half God of Rainfall by Inua Elams, and it was actually a plain verse, and I just really enjoyed the entire story. I actually even made a review video for that, so if you're interested in learning more specifically about that piece, I will leave a link in the description box below. But yes, what else do we have? Of course, Elizabeth Acevedo, who is incredibly 
really popular within the YA scene at this moment. So if you're interested, I would definitely recommend her work. Next, I have for you Instagram poets. I do feel like Instagram poets get a lot of flack. It's mainly people saying that their work is rather basic. But I think if anything, you can't deny that these people have managed to make poetry incredibly accessible. They have managed to introduce millions of people to poetry. Rupi Kaur's work, for instance, is very direct in the sense that most of her poems are short and easy to comprehend. Just to show you two examples. I stand on the sacrifices of a million women before me, thinking, what can I do to make this mountain taller so the women after me can see farther? Our elders are not disposable. Personally, I'm not really a fan of this type of poetry, but I do have respect for the work and the amount of influence it has had and continues to have. I mean, Rupi Kaur's Milk and Honey was actually the first poetry collection that I ever bought. And this is rather embarrassing, but... <laughs> I actually read like all of the poems in the love section to like this guy I had a crush on on the telephone. It was, um, yeah, it was a thing. <laughs> So there's that. If you're interested in trying to get familiar with a lot of different types of poetry and poets, I would definitely recommend you to try out like poetry magazines and literary magazines. So I will show you a couple that I own. So I recently subscribed to Poetry. So basically every month they come out with a collection of poems by whoop, by various poets and I think it's like it has like 180 like just below 200 pages filled with poetry so it's a great way of really exploring and trying to see what you like then I also have Firewords magazine and this is both like fiction and poetry and art as well um if you can <laughs> see here so it's very pleasing like aesthetically yeah so i would recommend those also one that i have been enjoying a lot is this irish uh, literary magazine called the stinging fly and it basically just has fiction, poetry, some reviews, and now and then also some translated fiction. So it's really a mixed bag. And I think like if you are getting into poetry and you don't want to make a huge investment in poetry that like a literary magazine is very nice because besides like the poems you still have some fiction but yeah my bet would definitely be try out poetry also because it isn't too expensive it says here that it's like three pounds three point seventy five dollars i know that sounds really weird three point seventy that doesn't make any sense okay let's move on <laughs> Then if you are interested in literary criticism of poetry, then I would highly recommend T.S. Eliot's On Poetry and Poets. So this is a collection of his essays and addresses in which he talks about various topics within poetry. The first part concerns poetry solely and it contains essays such as the social function of poetry and the music of poetry. The latter part is specifically on poets so you have people such as Rudyard Kipling who you might know from writing The Jungle Book, you have Virgil and the Irish poet William Butler Yeats, Yeats? Yeat! No, Yeats. <laughs> yes, so WB Yeats. No, come on, W, what? My brain isn't working correctly. First Yates lecture, we're gonna have three. Yates. 
and the Irish poet William Butler Yeats. I haven't been through the entire collection, but I think that one of the downsides to this one is that I'm pretty sure that it only covers poetry written by white men, and that is just a little part if you are looking at the wider spectrum of poetry. And that is why I would recommend you to try out poetry from all over the world. There are so many different customs when it comes to poetry from different types of regions and countries. I mean, think of, for instance, high haikus from Japan. I have this collection of haikus from every man's library and I find it incredibly calming to just now and then read a couple of these and really envision the pictures that they're painting with these haikus because often at times it's just like these simple things in life and like the weather and that just really like I said it really calms me and it's very soothing. So yeah I can just read a couple for you at random. For instance, this one is from Kikaku. The morning star, the cherry blossoms distinguished among the trailing clouds. And it's just like, oh, okay, I'm like looking at the clouds and cherry blossoms like on the side and like the leaves and stuff. <laughs> what am I saying? It's just very chill. <laughs> The downside, however, when it comes to reading translated poetry is that you do lose some sense of the original poem just because it's incredibly hard and even just impossible to translate literature and specifically poetry seamlessly. And so if you can read in a foreign language, I would definitely recommend you try and do so. I myself am trying to find like Japanese haiku books, so if you know any good ones, please do let me know. And you know, if you don't speak a language, that's okay as well. Sometimes I will also use like Google Translate or try and pronounce the words in like a language I'm not very familiar with because you might not understand it, but you can hear how the poem flows in the original language. And I think that that is something that is also very valuable. So, yeah, I think that is basically everything that I had to say for now on this topic. I hope it was helpful or at the very least a bit interesting. Either way, if you like the content that I make on my channel, perhaps consider joining my Patreon. I run a monthly book club where we read diverse classics. It's loads of fun. You can also support me by perhaps getting me a coffee or just subscribing, liking and commenting. Either way, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in another video. Bye bye.